wrong Rewrote the song Thoughts become action Tell me what's happening What's your mind wrapped in Wrapped around Wrapped around Wrapped around Wrapped around Yo, what's going on YouTube? Miss Eve here from Quick. And today I'm just going to be doing a quick video here of the Model 360. We had one of our viewers uh, recommend a video or suggest uh, we do a video. Uh, we'll have him bring his name up right up here. Just get us in focus here. So Red Wrestling Federation Universe Gaming, shout out to him or her. Uh, thanks for the uh, comment on the video. So basically what's up is he is basically asking um, uh, about some of the features that you can, like things you can do on the watch, things you can't do. Uh, because recently he switched from an iPhone uh, to a Galaxy phone. And he's thinking of picking up a Moto 360. So I'm going to do this video for him. Uh, let's just kick the uh, exposure up a little bit here. There you go. So I'm going to do the video here. Um, I'm going to show you first up, basically, um, I'm recording on the iPhone right now, so I can't have the phone in the shot. Uh, but I'm going to show you, basically, the limitations of iOS uh, and Android Wear. Uh, the compatibility issues and I'll talk a little bit about that so first things first when you load your watch up and whatever the battery drain on the watch is intense like you don't get a full day you won't get anywhere near a full day I think I mentioned this in the um, in the Moto 360 video already I'll have a link to that in the description um, but yeah I mean the battery life sucks on this thing and for the watch to stay connected to the phone you need to have the app open in the background on your phone 24-7 if you swipe like if you iOS if you double click and you swipe the app away the Android Wear app it's gonna disconnect the watch and you're not gonna get your notifications and most of the time I don't even know that I have like if I swipe it away it doesn't let me know that the watch has been disconnected and so I mean that's a bit I mean that's, I guess it's an issue there but that's uh, have to do with iOS um, in terms of notification management, now on the i on the iPhone, there's not really much that you can do. So I have I have a message here from a couple messages from my colleague M here. Put this one into focus now. So he says, "Oh, nice. What's up today?" All right. So if I if I'm on my watch, I'm using it for with iOS. I want to reply. I can't. The only thing you can do is just block the app from sending you um, like notifications, and it's the same thing for Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, and all these different apps that um that send you notifications with messages and stuff now I can use the watch for stuff like okay Google what's the weather like in Scarborough today alright so I can still do the okay Google stuff with the phone with the watch as <laughs> the activates there but um, in terms of overall usability and stuff like I get my notifications on the Android Wear um, from Google now but I can't really interact with them um, and you can't expand them, learn anything about them. It's kind of bas basically it, it, it ends up being a, a glorified Pebble watch. And uh, that's the issue for, for iOS and Android now. I don't really, uh, because of this, I don't really use my watch with iOS. I ended up just, I uh, have my Pebble, I link my Pebble up with my iPhone uh, when I'm using my iPhone. I don't use the, the, the Moto with my iPhone uh, strictly because I can't reply to my notifications. And that's uh, basically the main reason for having a watch like this, a smart watch, is, is to be able to reply. Um, I'm just taking a look in the settings here to see if anything's different, but um, also a, a small thing, you don't get Moto Maker on here with iOS, obviously, um, so you can't customize your own watch face or whatever, you just get stuck with the stock ones. Uh, I think there's like seven or eight uh, additional watch faces you can download in the actual Android Wear app um, for iOS, but I mean the watch faces, they're nothing special, so um, what I'm going to do now is I'll pause the video I'm going to link the watch up to my HTC and I'll show you kind of the differences between iOS and Android uh, compatibility with Android Wear and then I'll also get into some of the apps and stuff because um, uh, the commenter our viewer was asking about um, if you can reply actually like swiping or whatever texting on the watch itself if you can watch YouTube on the watch stuff small stuff like that so I'm going to pair up with my, uh, my uh, Android phone and I'll be right back. Alright, so I just finished setting up the watch on, the, um, on my Android phone here. I swapped the sims over. So first thing I'm going to show you is the difference in kind of how the watch manages notifications. So as you see here, I sent myself a text. Um, let's get this into focus here. Alright, so I sent myself a text. And on iOS, you wouldn't get this option to reply here. You would only get the option to block the app, which is this one here. So you wouldn't have anything like open on phone or call or whatever. So if I want to reply, I can just reply. What's up, man? Done. So voice dictation works with Google now, and that's that, right? So you can do that basically with any major messaging app. So I think it's with like any kind of text app. Um, you have WhatsApp, Facebook Messenger, stuff like that. And um, 
There's that. Uh, you can also, I'm not sure if iOS supports answering phone calls, but the thing is with the Moto 360 first gen, there's no built-in speaker, so you can't really um, listen to the phone on the watch. It's basically, you just answer the phone, it'll it'll answer it on your actual, uh, answer it on the watch, it'll, and it'll open the call up on your phone. Um, now, next thing uh, I wanted to cover here, um, uh, so before I get into that, so yeah, so basically the, the messaging and whatnot on, on Android for Android Wear is uh, much more intuitive. There's more to do on the actual Android device when you're linked up with Android to Android um, versus iOS to Android Wear. Um, so you can do stuff, like I said, you can do stuff like reply by text, uh, uh, reply with voice, you can answer your calls. If you have, like, if you have a watch that has a built-in speaker and supports uh, uh, the use of the speaker, then you can um, actually reply on it, like, this, you can answer the phone call on the watch and talk to your watch. Um, so you can do that as well. Now, in terms of um, options and adding stuff, put that in the focus. Now, I've downloaded a couple apps here. So we'll go to the YouTube Studio and Android Wear. And put Messenger aside. So these are the three apps that I downloaded just to show you how the uh, kind of customization goes in terms of Android, um, Android Wear. So I have three apps here. One's called Wear Messenger. Uh, you can pick that up in the Play Store. I think when I bought it, it was on sale for like $1.99 or something. Um, uh, so we'll get into that. There's this uh, kind of video slash YouTube thing, and then there's a web browser. So you download these, and it'll um, load it up to your uh, watch, basically. Uh, and there's a bunch of settings here you can go through. I just kind of didn't touch them at all. I just loaded them up, let them install on the watch, and um, yeah, so all of them are installed. So we'll get into it on the watch now. Um, so back to the same notification that I replied to before. Um, this is using the Wear Messenger. Now, if I want to reply to it, I can click Reply. And you can set up that there's a whole kind of keyboard, so I can go through and say, scroll through and be like, hey, uh, where's the space bar here? There you go. And it, like, I mean, it is because, like I said, uh, I don't know if you saw in the comment section below uh, for the other the, Mo the other Motorola video, it is very, very tedious to type on such a small screen. Um, but I mean, you can do this. So there, hey, what's up? Click the message button. And it's sent away. I just got the notification on my texting app on my iPhone and on my other phone there. Um, so you can do that. And then in the actual settings app for, let's open up the settings app here on Wear Messenger. Uh, you can just, like I said, there's a bunch of different settings. You can actually change what kind of keyboard you're using. So you can go to keyboard type here. Uh, so that's the stock keyboard. Now you can also choose to go full, key, like full screen keyboard, and it'll just display all the characters on once on the one screen. Um, now I wouldn't recommend doing this because you're gonna the, the letters are gonna be so small that you're most likely gonna make a bunch of errors. I'd rather have this keyboard and just be able to kind of swipe through and type uh, type it up. You can go with flick key, flick key with query. You can go with a keypad, flick pad, uh, a minimum keyboard, and then there's a bunch of different other keyboards here. I'm not sure if you can download more as in app purchases. I don't think you can. Uh, and you can set up what kind of um, I guess characters and stuff you want on your actual keyboard itself. So. Um, there's that app, and there's a. I mean, there's another um, uh, app similar to this one, but I don't think you get as much customization. Uh, I believe it is. I think it's just called Messages for Android Wear, um, and it does the same kind of thing. You can reply with text on your on your watch and whatnot. But I find when I use that one, it is free. Um, when I found when I used it on the watch, it wasn't as smooth uh, as an experience as with this with this app here. Um, so we'll get into the next app now. Uh, and the next kind of question that uh, our commenter had was, uh, can you watch YouTube on your watch? Now, the simple answer to that is yes, you can. You you download the app called VideoTube. Now, you have to link, uh, sign into your Google account and whatnot. So as you see here, I signed into one of my accounts here, and I think these are kind of the, um, what are these here? These are suggested videos, I guess, to watch. So. We'll pull this one up here, a crash course in sliding rally cars by Driven. Now, I'm doing this in real time now so you guys can see how long it'll take and what kind of delay it'll be. All right, so I skipped through a little bit here. I switched the video. Now, basically what happened is you got to have your watch actually linked up to your Wi-Fi network through the watch settings. Um, I'll go, I'll show you how to do that in just a second here. Now, as you can see here, I picked up a video here. It's just a car video of a Volkswagen. Now. When you when you watch it, there's no audio from the watch itself. Now I don't know um, if watches that have a speaker built in will support the audio. I'm sure they will. Um, and I believe you can also just link a pair of Bluetooth headphones up to your actual watch, 
Um, so you can watch the video on your watch and have your headphones on and you'll be able to hear the audio. Now, obviously with this being a small battery and you're pushing a bunch of pixels right now watching video, which it, the watch really wasn't meant to do, but because of Android, you're able to do that. Um, I don't think that the battery life's going to be fantastic. You're probably going to drain your battery really quickly. Um, as you can see here, you can kind of scrub through here the video. And you can see it's very touchy. Like the button is so small to scrub through that it's, it's not even working. So, I mean, there's the audio there. You can bump the audio up. Um, so you have basic controls here. I mean, so yeah, I mean, again, simple answer to the question, can you watch YouTube on your, on your watch? Yeah, you can. Uh, would I recommend it? Uh, unless you have a speaker in your watch and you have a power source nearby to charge it up after. Uh, no, I don't recommend watching it. Uh, it is quite buggy and it is because it's not a stock Google app and on top of that it doesn't run as smoothly as uh, one may want. Now next up I just want to show you the uh, the options to set up Wi-Fi so you can actually watch YouTube if you choose to. Um, it's fairly simple. You go into the Wi-Fi settings here on your watch. You look for your network. You click on your network. It'll say open on phone. And then you pull your phone over and you get a little Wi-Fi bubble thing here. You type in your password and it'll load the Wi-Fi network onto your watch. And uh, you'll be able to stream from your watch um, using YouTube, uh, that app. Was, I forgot what the app name was. Um, now, the next thing I'm going to show you wasn't necessarily requested by the viewer, but I did see it on the store and I wanted to check it out. And um, initial impressions of the app are it's quite buggy. Um, so go, let's go to YouTube.com. Okay, that picked up. All right, so we'll open this up again here. Google.ca. See what I mean? Like, it's really buggy, and I'm trying to do this in real time here so you guys can see whether or not it's buggy or not. So now, if the voice search doesn't work, you do have the option to type it in yourself. So we'll type in very tediously <laughs> Google.ca. And so these are the web links that it'll pull up, pull up here. I'll come a little bit closer so you'll be able to actually see it. Now, these are the different texts. You can open up different, I guess, um, popular searches for that. So we'll just go to google.ca and we'll see how this thing operates here. So again, you'll, it'll use your watch's Wi-Fi, so that'll also kill your battery quite quickly. Um, and it opens up the desktop version of the website, which is not going to be... Um, ideal for a watch with little to no processing power. Um, and I'm getting a notification here on my phone saying Google app has stopped. Now, I did test this off camera. That's why I had to edit the video and cut out a little bit. Um, it, it, it's very buggy. It does affect the watch's performance overall, just having these apps installed. Um, now, yeah, so I mean, that's pretty much browser. It opens desktop versions. It's very disappointing app. Um, if it did open kind of a, a Android Wear specific browser where it was very touch friendly on a small screen, maybe I'd keep it even if it does uh, um, inhibit performance just a tad. But they do load desktop versions of the site. And I tried going to the, some of the bookmarks that were there like Amazon, eBay. You have to pay to get to get access to those apparently. Um, so I could say the video tube thing, again, would I recommend it? Not really. Uh, browser, would I recommend it? Not at all. Because uh, you just can, if you, basically, like really, what are you going to need a browser on your watch for? Uh, you're you're probably going to be faster and more better off just taking your phone out of your pocket and searching whatever you need to search up um, on your actual phone itself. If you need to find something quick, you can always, okay, Google, what's the weather like? And there you go. That's the fastest way for me to, to get access to quick information. Okay, Google. Oh, geez. Open mic. No. Okay, Google. What was the score on the last Raptors game? There you go, right? So it's really quick and convenient just to use the Google built-in um, voice dictation and whatnot. I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't recommend using the browser video. And um, this video is getting a little bit long, longer than I expected it to. And, um, but yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. This is just a video for one of our viewers. He commented asking... Um, he basically, I, I, I would say from what I pulled from his comments and questions was basically, is it worth picking up an Android Wear watch and what can I actually do with it um, versus having it on iOS? And the simple answer to that question is you can do a lot more. Like I showed you in this video, there's many things that you can do. 
Um, you can reply with voice, you can reply on keyboard, you can answer your calls. And uh, on iOS, you can't do that with the Android Wear Watch. And um, so, yeah, I mean, dude, if uh, to our commenter, I think his name was Worldwide Wrestling uh, Gaming. Um, it, uh, to you personally, if you're gonna picking up a watch, um, go for it. If you, you want to pick up the Moto 360 first gen, I believe it's on sale now for like 170 on most stores in Canada. It's probably cheaper in the states if you're from there. Um, so yeah, dude, go for it. The it's gonna work flawlessly with your Galaxy phone, and you're not gonna have any issues with it. Anyways, if you like what you're seeing, drop a like on the video. Uh, hopefully, this video helped uh, more than just one person out, as um, I'm sure a lot of you guys had questions as well. Um, so yeah, drop us a like on the video if you like the content. Uh, sub to the channel as well. Helps us out. Share it with your friends and family if you think maybe they need uh, some tech advice or if they're looking to buy something. Just uh, share them a video from us. Uh, it definitely helps us out. We appreciate that a lot. And that's pretty much it. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, drop them down in the comment section down below. Uh, this has been Nassif from Click, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.